Hello, and welcome to the online worship service of Ada Congregational Church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we pray that you would experience welcome here as we seek to do our best to love all and welcome all and seek justice for all. This is a week where in our country we celebrate, commemorate our veterans. It's also a month where we recognize Native American Heritage Month. And there's lots of other things going on in our individual lives and collectively and communally as a church family and a community and a country. And so as we bring all of that with us to worship, we invite you to take a moment to breathe, to experience God's grace and God's peace as we gather together in worship. Our focus today is on the word rejoice. We've moved through our theme of reconnect, restore, and rejoice. And so here we are. And today we're going to focus on gratitude as part of what leads us to rejoicing. As we begin and as a call to worship, hear these words from Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to God on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to God a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the Lord, word of the Lord is right and true. God is faithful in all God does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of God's unfailing love. And then the closing words of that psalm, We wait in hope for the Lord. For God is our help and our shield. In God our hearts rejoice, for we trust in God's holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. As we focus on rejoice, on joy, and on gratitude, let's come together in worship. How's it going? I'm Jimmy Vandenberg, and uh, I was asked to draw some art for uh, this Sunday. It is under the uh, the same theme of re reconnect, restore, and rejoice. And I am a bit of a you know visual visualizer, so it's kind of like, well, how can that be like kind of translated into like uh, like simple like artwork? You know, like because like I mean not like like abstract uh you know objects are kind of hard to draw like how do you draw reconnecting or rejoicing uh so you know i uh, do something a little right here and uh 
yeah, so I, I'll kind of like pop it up on the screen right here. But basically, I kind of, for the first one, reconnect. I was like, well, what's something that's kind of universal that everyone will understand that represents the idea of reconnecting? And what better to uh, to use than just an outlet in your house? And, and your, uh, that's you, I'm guessing everyone uses it every day. And uh, very simple. And, you know, so there we, we got reconnecting, which kind of like, you know, uh, represents the idea of everyone after these like uh, it's the year of COVID coming back together and reconnecting with each other. Uh, right below it, we have restore, which is kind of another like universal, like everyone kind of knows what the recycling like symbol is. It just means to make something uh, new again. And I think that's kind of uh, what we're doing here in the church. We're changing things up, kind of switching a lot of things around during the quarantine. You know, we had to do the um, the online service and stuff. So, yeah, re, kind of re-restoring what, what used to be and may, give it a new splash. Uh, and then the third one is uh, Rejoice. And I basically have some hands that, you know, are lifting up to, to the sky or to heaven. And, uh, you know, just very, again, everyone, when you see the hands... Everyone gets that uh, those hands are uh, placing something. So, um, yeah, that that's uh, basically kind of um, all of that. And then I uh, also kind of did like a nice little touch where I like uh, combined kind of all three. As you can see, the cord kind of makes the circle for the recycling and then goes into the hands, which shows that uh, all three of those uh, like ideas are all connected and um yeah, they all kind of build up off each other. So uh, yeah, that that kind of was an overview of my of my artwork for reconnect, restore, rejoice.
As I record this video, the weather outside has turned quite dreary. Last weekend, we camped the first retreat we've done in two years with our high school friends. And we camped at Muskegon State Park and it was glorious, sunny, 60 degrees. The colors in the leaves were perfect. We watched the sunset from the dune. We watched the moon and the stars in all of their radiance. We sat around a campfire and shared our lives. It was glorious. And now I look out the window and it's been raining most of the day. The temperature is hovering in the mid thirties and snowfall is starting to come and that excites some people and horrifies others. But it's gray and it's damp and it's cold. And that might be a good way to describe how many of us feel in the world right now. I've had a number of conversations this week with people who just uh, talked about how tired they were, how sick of everything they were, how frustrated with COVID and all that comes with it. And so as we focus on rejoice, and joy and beauty for the beauty of the earth. And it's gray and it's cold and it's damp. How do we rejoice? How do we find joy when we feel meh? The sermon today is called Rejoice in the Lord Always. And that comes from Philippians 4. Philippians 4 is the last chapter in a letter to Paul's friends in the church at Philippi. One of many letters that Paul wrote to these churches that he helped plant and to partners in ministry who had gone out and planted churches. And Paul had had a hard life up till that point. Bitten by a snake, poisonous, shipwrecked, stoned, his life threatened, imprisoned numerous times in jail as he wrote many of these letters under house arrest. Things were hard. It would be easy for him to say, this stinks, God, where are you? What is going on? This is not how I envisioned my life to go. This is not how I wanted things to turn out. I could be using so much more if you would just give me what I want and let me go free. But he doesn't. He often talks about peace, inner peace, about gratitude and gratefulness, thankfulness to God for for all that God has given him. And he uses the word rejoice over and over. And so in the midst of all of the hardship, Paul writes these closing words to his friends in Philippi. This is chapter four, beginning in verse four. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. 
And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, siblings in Christ, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. God, we pray that your word will speak to us. May it comfort us and challenge us and point us to Jesus, the very word of God. Amen. So Paul has experienced plenty of hardship, and yet he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And then just to put it in bold face, he says again, I'll say it again, rejoice. Well, how do you do that? It's easy to say, right? Plenty of people have this as a life verse, or put it on a a sticky note on your bathroom mirror, or your dashboard of your car. It's a great reminder, but But how do you do that when things are hard? We got a call from a friend. Barry, his his brother passed away this week. Got a call from, from other friends who have friends in the hospital or who are driving to see family who's struggling, hoping that family can get out of the hospital and get on a flight and get to a wedding that's really really important. And you all have your own experiences and stories of of the things that have been hard. In the midst of those things, in the midst of that, uh, Paul says, rejoice. And there are times, last weekend we had one with a youth group It was so easy to rejoice sitting on a hammock in the middle of the campground, the sun coming through kind of the smoky haze, the beautiful yellows and orange of the trees, the hike through the woods. Rejoice. Yes, of course, it's easy. It's easy when it's beautiful. It's easy when life goes well. But life doesn't doesn't always go well. And it definitely isn't always easy. So how do we rejoice when it's hard? How do we we get that joy to continue to bubble over even when we're not happy? Or when we don't feel great about ourselves or our lives or or the world? It seems that Paul might be pointing to something more than just how we feel. There's an inclination. There's a turning of our heart. What are we oriented toward? Is that just ruled by what happens, our circumstances, and then how we respond and how we feel to the circumstances that happen around us? Or is there something more an inclination, an orientation toward joy. And if there is such a thing, where does that come from? Rejoice in the Lord always. How? Well, we're coming up on a, on a civic holiday called Thanksgiving. Right? We have a, a bounty here behind me. Well, Thanksgiving is more than just gathering with friends and some ham and some turkey and stuffing and gravy and cranberries. And we can be thankful for those things. We can be thankful for, for time with family, thankful for a break from school or work. But do, do we rejoice? I think Thanksgiving is part of that. I think gratitude might be the root of Thanksgiving. And so the question behind the question of how do we rejoice when things are hard, beneath that, I think, is how do we orient ourselves toward gratitude? 
towards thanksgiving, thankfulness. And why is that so hard? Because Jesus talks all about thanksgiving, about gratitude, about joy and peace. The Psalms are filled. Next week we'll read, um, there's 130 plus mentions of the word rejoice in our translations of the English Bible. So it's a word that is thrown about all throughout scripture. Why is it so hard? Well, Paul says, the Lord is near. Don't be anxious about every situation. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So when the world around us is bubbling up our anxiety, anxiety is an evil, it's natural. As it happens, how do we respond? Well, Paul encourages us, prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, lay that before God. And he says, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. So gratitude. Why is that so hard? I think for many of us, we've come into life through a culture that teaches us scarcity. There's not enough. And so I have to grab mine and grab as much as I can for me and mine. And so our, our inclination is often me, mine, right? What are some of the first words of our toddlers? Mine. Now, is that evil? I don't think so. They're trying to create boundaries around themselves and their stuff. But we, we sometimes need to be taught how to share, how to open ourselves up, how to offer to others. And that can be hard as more and more people and more and more culture and more and more companies and more and more governments grab and harvest resources and steal and colonize and take over and exploit on their way to the top. They step on those below them. And so we inherit this model that is the opposite of gratitude. We inherit a model of living selfishly. And it's hard to rejoice when you're selfish. It's hard to have joy when you are endlessly trying to grab and hold and make sure and find security. And there's no room for gratitude when I'm gripping onto everything. And Philippians 2, earlier in this letter, tells us that, that Jesus did not consider equality with God something to be grabbed onto and held onto, but instead he opened himself up, became a human, lived among us. That's an incredible image, the word kenosis. But he, he, he didn't grip, he didn't grab, he, he opened. And if, if we hear anything today, that's the image I need to hear. And maybe I share with you in case you might get something from it. As we grip, as the news around us, as phone calls from friends, as the weather, it just causes us to start to do this. And we start to worry. And the anxiety and the trauma continue to build. And we grip more and more. God, opens, God offers us the opportunity to open up. And as we open up, we have the opportunity to share, to offer ourselves to each other and to God. We open ourselves up to learn 
from someone else. Our church family has decided we're going to sponsor a family from Afghanistan that is moving to our community. And we might think of them as someone from far off, but they are our neighbors, literal neighbors living in our community now, but also our neighbor in the sense that Jesus told us to love our neighbors. And so as we love all and welcome all and seek justice for all, we can't do that if we're doing this. And so here we go. I don't know any words in the Afghani language, but I'm going to start learning them this week so that we can talk and value and show honor to this family that will be new to our community. And I don't know how you might get involved, but as we open ourselves up, it's risky. We open ourselves up to pain and to hurt, but also to beauty and joy and love and peace. And so as we open ourselves up with gratitude, we're reminded that, that Christ invites us to the table, not because we did anything particular to earn it, but because there's plenty, there's abundance, and all are welcome. And so we welcome others, and we extend that invitation. And if we offer too much love, or we share too much of our stuff, we trust that God will handle that that God will continue to be faithful as the psalm we read to begin our service said. And so trusting in God's faithfulness, we open ourselves up with gratitude. We offer ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, as Paul writes in Romans. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, Paul says. I pray that we'll be able to do that in increasing ways as we start to look toward Advent, as we move through our country's tradition of thanksgiving, as we offer ourselves to our neighbors around us. Let gratitude be our inclination. Let opening ourselves up be our posture in the world as we try to love all and welcome all and seek justice for all. Amen. I'm Susie Warriner. Today I'm sharing what joy we receive through a portion of our gifts to our church. Music ministry is service to God. It encourages believers, supports the sermons, praises and worships God, sharing the gospel through song. Music is pure joy. I've been a member of our church and choir for 27 years. We have extraordinary leadership in our choir director, Ed Van Overen, and remarkable talents and vision through Sherry Van Overen. What joy music brings to our hearts and to our souls. The feelings we all get stay with us even after we hear them. Music for the children's choirs the Ada Melodies, the Anchormen, the symphony musicians, and of course our joyful ringers handbell choir, God loves bells, and the countless others, others that have graced us with the joy of music. Our gifts to our church will help continue blessing us with that joy. Thank you so very much for your support for our church and our music ministry here at Ada Congregational Church. Joy to you all. In the spirit of welcoming all and in observance of Native American Heritage Month, please hear and pray with us the words of the Lord's Prayer in a version that might seem familiar, but also a new version from the First Nations version of the Bible. Our Father, who art in heaven. O great spirit, our Father from above. Hallowed be thy name. Your name is sacred and holy. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Bring your good road to us. On earth as it is in heaven. 
where the beauty of your ways in the spirit world above is reflected in the earth below. Give us this day our daily bread. Provide for us day by day the elk, the buffalo, and the salmon, the corn, the squash, and the wild rice, all the good things we need for each day. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Release us from the things we have done wrong in the same way we release others for the things done wrong to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the and power, power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. As we go our separate ways, go in the grace and peace of God. May God's love so fill you. May God's spirit so be with you that you will be opened up and live a life of gratitude this week. Go in peace, friends. <laughs>